we are going to be heading out towards a place called Bradgate Park. Excuse the voice, I've been lousy for the last three or four days with headaches and God knows what. You don't want to know my ailments. There's plenty more people worse off than me in the world. Um, so yeah, I'm, we're going to be getting off to this place called Bradgate Park. It's about eight mile outside of my hometown here in Loughborough. It's pretty famous history wise um, with Lady Jane Grey, but we'll cross that bridge when we get up there. Bit of a tour, how you park, what you pay for, what it costs you and what to do when you're there. Enjoy. We are on our way, <clears throat> excuse my voice, like I say, I've had it a bit on the rough side for four or five days, it's still ain't there yet. This is taking us out towards the M1, we're going to turn left into the countryside of Leicestershire, where Braggart Park is, towards Newtown, Linford, small village. Again, weather's took a turn, as you can see in the clouds, it's gone a bit miserable. It was nice and sunny this morning when we could have done it, but hey ho, personal things had to be done first. So. Let's go on our way. On the left there, I always mention it, gas prices, 130 just under for unleaded, about 4p more for diesel. So we're gonna hook a left here now, go down Snell's Nook Lane, it's a long one. Don't ask why it's called that, I've no idea. Someone will comment, I guess, if they know. Turning left there would take you back down to a place called Woodhouse Eaves, again a small village just outside Loughborough. Um, and also Beacon Hill. Called Beacon Hill because they light it up with a beacon for Queen's Jubilees and other events. It is all volcanic round here. The whole of this, all these mountains and hills, should I say, not mountains, but hills. <clears throat> they are um, all volcanic. I think I've mentioned it before on one of my posts. Uh, and where we're going now, Ragged Park is also um, ex-volcano. I think something silly like 600 million years ago, it all exploded and, and it is what it is. In fact, at Beacon Hill, there is one of the natural uh, wonders of Leicestershire, if not England. And that is that where the volcanic rock came out of the ground to a sheer face, actually came from uh, the bottom of the sea to get where it finished. Not many people realize that. And kids just climb on it thinking it's just a rock, but that's the history of it. Oh, it's been a bit cloudy, a bit dark down here, so if the camera goes a bit dark, apologise for it. Real nice and green now this time of year here in England. <clears throat> Reminds me of uh, Georgia, when I've been in the US a lot. And some of Tennessee as well, I guess, but we didn't uh, travel that much in Tennessee in the countryside when we were there, and we will do next time when we go back. So we're now, now towards another part of the back end of Braggart Park, which will be in front of us. Um, and if you notice up here now, there's all double yellow lines. These double yellow lines were put down from here now all the way up to the exit on the T-junction purely because the tight ones who do not want to pay £3 or £3.50 to park uh, look you see this is typical you see now they'll get away with that because it's, it's inside the, the yellow line but they're just tight as proverbial ducks bums um, and they won't pay the, the parking fees and the parking fees keep places like the one in front which is the back end of Bracken Park and the one we're going to open keep some trimmed, keep some nice and fresh and everything else. So this is the first entrance to Braggart Park which we're not going to go into. 
we're going to go down the other side and have a long walk, hopefully down to the cafe that's open. This is the end, if you went in this end now, that it's what, within about 600 metres into the park, 800 metres into the park, it kind of comes to a pinnacle height. Just entering Newtown Linford now, doesn't take long to get in. Some of the houses in this village uh, of Newtown Linford are worth a small fortune. Some are listed, old cottages and, and buildings that you can't even put new windows in because they're listed here in the UK. Um, so yeah, it's, a, it's, it's an expensive village to live in Leicestershire. And then just outside of this place is a few cheaper ones towards the city of Leicester, which is about four miles away. But this here itself now is gonna take us up to the entrance where we're going into Bradgate Park. Again, apologize for my voice. I can't speak much louder than I'm doing. Um, some nice pubs around here actually to come and have a meal once and uh, once the corona craps disappeared. The Bradgate used to be one well known for its meals. And you're on to the left hand side. Very quiet today around here. You come at the weekend and it's uh, quite heavy on traffic. Um, and takes you a while to get up here and, and to park at Bradgate Park at the weekends. Yeah, takes some doing. But uh, And also you'll find the traffic wardens and the cops will put you a ticket on if you are blocking the road down here. All double yellows. Which, for our American friends, double yellow lines means basically you can't park. Oh look, what have I just said about a traffic warden? Hello sir, book him down home, right in front of you there look. And there's a, there's a warden. Happy days. So this little shop on the right is the tea room, which I've, I've ever been in actually. It sells cakes and God knows what. Um, and here is the entrance to Bradgate Park. Newtown Linford. And already there's a fair few folk here which kind of surprised me. I didn't think it was going to be this busy today on a mid hump day Wednesday, as they call it. Talk about humps. There's enough humps here to slow you down traffic wise. So I'm going to get parked up. It's a pay and display. Probably three quid, £3.50. Uh, there is a charge notice of £95 if you don't pay. So it's well worth paying, folks. Don't try and skimp. You know, pay for your parking. It helps towards uh, conserving this for your kids and grandkids and any American friends that come over as a tourist. So let me get parked up, pay the machine, we'll get gone for a walk around. Okay, we're here. This is your, your parking and everything else that goes with being in Bradgate. Uh, what we got? Not in use, great. We'll go elsewhere. That one's all locked up. Turns out that some of the machines are not working and not in use. Well, they're locked up. Oh, you like that one there, look. Rubbish. Anyway, I'll go across here and try this one. Yeah, so there you go. Three pounds, so we're finally paid. And then the only one that was working, of course, was the one we used. Hey ho. A lot of these trees in the park are actually protected. And that's why they won't knock them down here to look a bit rustic. Some have got actually uh, fences around them like this one here on the right. This is the main walkway we're on now. This waterway here to your right, like I say, I wouldn't say completely dries out, but I've seen it very, very dry in the summer. So, but yeah, some of these trees are extremely old. Been here hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, some have been hit by lightning along the way. Um, but yeah, nice place to be when there's not many people about. A bit rough on a weekend when there's loads of dogs, cyclists, and basically human beings. <laughs> but hey-ho, there are deer here at Bradgut Park, but to my American viewers, you can't shoot them, I'm afraid. <laughs> you can't just come in and hunt deer. Um, they are over there, actually, there's a few there. Well, I do want to get a bit nearer. These are bred here, actually, and the stags can be very, very violent uh, at breeding time. But yes, a lot of fallow deer and God knows what around here. Um, but yes, you can't just come in and shoot them. Um, you would never get a hunting license for them. 
They are called by the park and then the venison is sold at the cafe. More of the pushed up volcanic stone here. Very old trees coming up and that one's actually grown right at the side of the granite. Let me just walk off into the, you can do this by the way up here. You can walk where you want to walk. There's no restrictions really. But let's have a walk up here and I'll show you this one because this is really strange. The way that it's actually, if the camera's all over the place, I'm climbing up these rocks. Shouldn't be, should be good. But yeah, as you can see, what's happened there with the roots and everything else and it's grown right at the side into the granite. Very, very old tree. And yeah, been there many, many years, hundreds of years. There's the wife down the bottom there. Another one here that grows from just underneath the volcanic rock. Um, again, very, very old. I know I keep going about old trees, but it is, this place is full of them because they've been protected for many, many years. I used to come up here when I was a kid with my dad. Sunday afternoon after he'd been for a, a nice heavy drinking session at dinner time. <laughs> it was the end thing to bring your kids up to Bradgate Park. The population wasn't as bad as it is now in the UK of 65 million, whatever it is in the UK now. Back then, 40 million maybe, you know. Um, so it never got so crowded. And a lot of this then as well, can I just say, was bracken. Um, there's some bracken at the top there, but this all used to be dark green bracken. I'm not sure, but I can seem to remember there was a, a decent fire which kind of taught the uh, land management company to get rid of a lot of the bracken because when it got really dry, this is what made it pretty bad. Um, as you walk down, there's a lot more deer across here. I'm a poet and don't know it. Yeah, and there's the Lady Jane, Jane Grey's family's home right in the distance there. But we will actually get nearer and have a walk down. We actually pass it. So bear with me on that one. These things are all over the park. Um, basically what they're, what they're doing is telling you not to feed the deer. It can be dangerous to you and them. And then put your litter in the right one for recycling. Again, when we were kids, they were never there. You took your litter home with you. So here we have our first plaque of the day. And uh, I'll give you a read on this one. Charles Bennion of Thurs Thurnby in this county, who in the year 1928, with the helpful con concurrence of their heirs of the Greys of Gruby, that's what I say, it's Lady Jane Grey, the Greys of Gruby, um, basically gave the park over to the county of Leicester. So it's Charles Bennion who gave the land across, bless his cotton socks. Uh, so yeah, that's the man. So we'll continue having a walk down here. I'm surprised there's no loose dogs, there normally is. The things that worried it kind of knocked out us last time we came up was lo loose dogs all over the place. And we kept ours on a leash all the time or a lead. And bikes, lycra clad people in, on bikes shoving by you, which was crazy because I, I, it should be walkway only. And it's, I think there's two days a week now down here that you can actually bring cars, believe it or not, for the disabled and the elderly who can get down to the cafe. But that's only two days a week. But this, all, what you see here would, would have been years ago, all heavily forest land, um, very heavy forest. And that house would have been, I won't say in the middle of it, but not far. Blame Disney for thinking that every deer you see is a Bambi. Talk about what I've just said. Yeah, and there you go. This is the side of the building now, where the Greys used to live many hundreds of years ago. But that's the basic map. There's Switzerland Wood there, which we're nowhere near. Um, and then we're down here. This is the, the deer sanctuary at the back of us. We're just about here now, and we're running towards the cafe. Again, Lyme disease, so that's pretty standard. We have that even at work. And again, people, 
keep dogs on it. So far I've not seen one loose, which is great today. But weekends, there's always someone letting them loose. So there you go. And last but not least, we need your help. We now have a wildlife logbook in the visitor center. Sightings of bird, mammals, reptiles, insects, plants, and fungi. Happy days. That's the notice board. And again, you've got this here. This is uh, the Leicestershire, and you can read that, footpath association. And it tells you where to go. You can hear the peacocks there. Um, you've got one way to Switzerland tea rooms, that's where we're going. That way, Newtown Linford, where we've come from. And that way, for less year old John, Cropston and Anstey, is that way. And we ain't going there today. Let's move, let's walk. There are peacocks just the other side of that wall. They used to roam around all over the place when we were kids. Not seen any today. Again, the signage. Deer sanctuary, visitors are not allowed past this point. And if you just look to the left, there's loads of deer. That's where they're bred and looked after when they're young. And then they're allowed out onto the estate as they get a bit older to roam freely for some very nice venison. They're bred for no other reason. Okay, we have another plaque, not very readable. I don't know if you can see that or not. But it says these trees, some were planted, these here, uh, in 1946 to commemorate rural Britain's achievements raising nearly 9 million for the service of the Red Cross Agricultural Fund during World War from 1939 to 1945. Of this amount, the County of Leicestershire subscribed £175,485. And then there's a bit of a poem down here. Through God's good grace, through strength of English oak, we have preserved our faith, our throne, our land. Now with our freedom saved from tyrant's yoke, we plant these trees, remember why they stand. And there you go. Obviously young oaks, in comparison to the others down the bottom there. Well, we made it to what they call the deer barn, visitor centre, tea room, meeting room. And then just to your left hand side up here, nice big house, smack in the middle of Bradgate. I don't know actually what it's used for, and the keepers use it as a keeper's cottage, I have no idea. There is a few cars here at the back of the car park, so today might be one of them days where you're allowed to bring cars. Being Wednesday, hump day. Toilet's always nice and clean. Um, two gents, a ladies and a disabled. Visitor centre is obviously locked because of COVID. Can't do anything about that. And there's the English Rose. Lovely mess on the back of that New Holland. Defibs if you want them, if you suffer. All the phone numbers there. In case you ever want to come up, you need the phone numbers. And then obviously, the only reason why we've come all this way, to get a takeaway coffee. <laughs> but hey ho, we'll see. Well, here we are. There's one for you. Jam. Clotted cream. Half a scone, because it'll have been eaten by somebody to the side of the table. So what do you put on first then? Jam, clotted cream, clotted cream, or jam? Think about it, comments below. I put the jam on first, and it's gone all over the place and I can't move this clotted cream. Coffee here is red hot. Not barista, that ain't. I think it's a push button machine, but hey ho. So, I'm gonna get this down me, but give it some thought. Jam on first or clotted cream? The idea of this peephole is that you can through, see through the wall, 
look at birds that you wouldn't normally see. So, reservoir across the way there, that's all it is. The very top there now, you can see Old John to the right. I know it's very difficult. I'm not gonna walk all the way out there today if we're gonna do a, a real proper full review than I would, but this is just a nice walk out on a summer's day. And then to the left, you can see another spike monument. So yeah, that's part and parcel of Braggart Park. It does go on a fair bit. I'll give you the acreage at the top here on, on blue writing, I'm sure, when I edit this, so you'll know how big the park is. It's expensive, that stuff. Dear shit, that. Classics are the best. Moving on. Let's have a look here. No admittance. Again, there's another orienteering uh, sign. Um, but yeah, can't see a great deal through there. But uh, that's where the peacock noises are coming from. But um, hey ho, takes you up to the other side of the grey residence. Anyway, being stared at by that deer there. Look, if you can see him in the grass. Let's get to so we can get him right close up. Just his antlers sticking up through the grass. Yeah, I can see you. Anyway. Grass is a bit slippery, so I'm gonna take my time, but uh, I'm gonna go up towards the, the ruins. Very old brickwork. And there you go, nice close up of Lady Jane Grey's family residence of old. White swans, birds of the crown, as they call them, thinking you've got food for them. You're not allowed to kill a swan in the UK. Um, against the crown rules, I believe. <laughs> 